I say hello to all my friends on YouTube. Here's Germany, Alex. Welcome to a new tutorial, a new scratch technique um, created by a very famous technique and this is a chirp. So and I want to name the now following performance auto chirp because I involve the characteristic feature of the autobahn scratch, scratch in a chirp performance. How it functions can we see right now in the following video. Advice I use at this example um, as in phonetic recording a uh, kind of slideable. You can hear this right now. This is from the dirt style um, black market uh, battle tool I think and it goes like fit fader bass so I use the fit and the fader for scratching and yeah once again fit fader. this is my sample sample so okay and now we start with the auto chirp performance look at the video first in slow motion so and as you saw I play at first a chirp then I let the record play and then I play the chirp but I use the second segment of this sample so the fit is the first chirp fit 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 and then fader is for the second chirp performance so and the idea is that we play a chirp then we go a step inside the sample so to uh, catch the second sound and then I play also a chirp variation and then I go back to the start point so the phonetic result is that we obtain two different types of chirp sounds by using each time another segment of the sample. Okay, so it will be clear how it sounds when we see the now following video twice as fast as always. Let's go. So and this is a really nice combo, I think. So, okay. Now, step by step, the function of this performance. First, the record motion without using the crossfader. And the characteristic record motion of the chirp is logic. We move the record very fast, forwards and backwards. You can see this inside the notation indication. A note to tone in a higher range of the staff. The additional dot over the head to denote the really high motion intensity of this forward-backward motion. And yeah, important is that we play the first sound in this motion sequence. So then it's very important we let the record play so like this and now we are at the following sound and this is the fader and then we make this as uh, a typical movement for the chirp performance but we use the second sound and after this we go to our start point. So the crossfader sequence is clear. We see the notational breakdown. That means first closing, then opening. This is clear, like the normally performance of the chirp. Okay, now step by step, we go to the first sound. The fader is open, and now we do the regular chirp performance with the first sound. That means closing at the forward motion. Open at the backward motion. Then, after this, after the first chirp, we do it once again. So the second chirp, um, 
still with the first sound. The notational indication shows only one chirp, but that's not important at the moment. So, okay, chirp, chirp with the first sound, then important, we let the record play, so as in release. The fader still open, and now we are at the second sound. It's important that we let the record um, run till we arrive the second sound, and now we can catch the second sound and play the second chirp. Means closing, open, closing, open, and then the fader is still open. We go to the start point. Okay, once again. We catch the first sound right now. Catch the first sound. Chirp. Once again. Chirp. Then the faders open. We let the record play to run the first sample. Then we catch the second sound. It's important to have the right positioning on the rhino right now and then. We go further to the second chirp performance and then to repeat this pattern we move the record back to the start point. Okay. So and this is a really nice combo. You can um, use also three different types of um, sounds mm, as you wanted. We see finally the double time performance and let's go. Once again. Okay, I hope you got it. Um, try it, send me replies. Bye bye.